Circus being joined in studio by Jeff Bridges, a uh, veteran actor, star of a great new movie called uh, The Amateurs. Welcome uh, welcome to the studio, Jeff. Thank How you. Doing, you. Great to be here. Amateurs was uh, a lot of fun, and I felt like I had sort of discovered something uh, ah, when I saw it. Because that's, that's good. my favorite, uh, honestly, the best compliment I could give uh, anybody that was part of a film or a writer or a director was that uh, I thought that it was well written and it was it was clever. And I've heard you say, when you see a film, the number one thing for you is you like to be surprised. Right. It's surprising from the outset, because not to give too much away, but it appears that it's going to be a, uh, a, a comedy based in a small town. All of a sudden, we find out a central element of the movie is porn. <laughs> <laughs> now that right. was a surprise right 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 absolutely yeah. I'll, actually i'll tell you something that was very subtly woven in there and they don't mention it in interviews or, or yeah. whatever but i think you might find it interesting having seen the film that all of the characters in the film have names that reference andy of newberry <laughs> the andy right? griffith show, yeah yeah if you think about it <laughs> uh yeah. Okay. I guess. Yeah. Otis. Right. Yeah. yeah. We had uh, we had Bill Fickner up here talking about. Yeah. Okay. I guess yeah. now if I yeah. go through you, it, you I will see it, that. Yeah. See that. Yeah. Because it's uh, it, it's based in in small town America. But you know what? As quickly as you're surprised by that subject matter, um, it's for a movie that has a central element of porn. It is the furthest thing from porn. Right. You're rooting for this entire town to make this porn movie. I think if I brought my grandmother to this, she will be rooting the town That's on it. to get Isn't the porn that, made, right? This guy, Mike Traeger, uh, who wrote it and directed yeah. it, it's his first film uh, he's directed, uh, was brilliant in trying to marry these two you know, opposing realms, the realm of porn and kind of the heartfelt movie that Frank Capra might make. Mm -hmm. You know, It's a Wonderful Life yeah. sort of thing. And he, he, he blends them... Uh, to really a comedic, uh, uh, touching effect, I think. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm real proud of the movie, and, and it made me laugh anyway. I thought there were a couple other elements that, you know, a lot of people can relate to. Number one, your character, Andy, is uh, he's, he's a guy who's always had big ideas. Nothing's ever worked out in this small town. And uh, his his wife has left him, the mother of his uh, child, and he's she's remarried to a much more successful guy. I think there's lots of people uh, that can relate to that element as well because it seemed like for as much as your character is wanting to make a success of himself, he's really wanting to prove something to his son and, and maybe to an extent even that ex-wife that, that he doesn't have to, you know, in the end... Maybe not quite the loser she had him pegged as. Yeah, well, I think he wants to, uh, he loves, you know, so many people in his life he loves, and he wants to uh, do good by them, yeah. you know, and he wants to uh, make them proud of him. Yeah, and uh, Ted Danson, who plays a, a gay character, maybe in the uh, most extensive degree of denial anyone's ever seen. I mean, <laughs> if, if anybody has grown up gay or known someone who's gay in a small town, that must be the hell of that existence. Ted kicks it out of the park in this one he is so brilliant yeah, yeah. amazing amazing performance you uh now i i liked uh, you were talking about the attention to detail like the naming of the characters and everything i thought there was a lot of subtle humor in uh the film the amateurs uh, even down to the point that when you're doing your uh research for porn because yeah you know you're mm -hmm. you're taking this seriously you got to look at a lot of porn you got to research it you don't get high-end porn you get the old VHS giant boxes that are like the four-hour compilations that you get for nine ninety-five. I know it sounds like I know a lot about that, but I'm just saying that spoke to me. Good, good. You well, know? he's from a small town. You know, yeah. Those kind, of, those kind of the old tapes, they back up on the shelves. There's a pile of those at a low price. Yeah, yeah. He went to town. Yeah, he know. did. He did. Now, what uh, behind the scenes, what was the, going on with the distribution of this film? Because I, I saw it, and uh, I, I was surprised to find out it was made know, a couple I of years know, ago. I know. Made a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and there's so many elements that have to come together for a movie to uh, be released at all, let alone be a success. Mm -hmm. And this one got kind of uh, sidetracked. Uh, there was a fellow who uh, fell in love with the movie, a distributor. He snatched it up, and then... He went belly up financially, mm. and then the whole thing kind of fell apart, and we were, you know, just on the shelf for mm -hmm. literally two years and thinking that this it wasn't going to come out. So this is a, feels especially good to know that, you know, we, we our baby is still with us and we get to, you know, deliver it. And, and I want to encourage everybody to get out there because, yeah. as you probably know, it's those first two weekends. Yeah. This one might not stay around because, you know, it's only a limited release. It's couple of theaters here in texas you yeah know, one in la seattle and minneapolis 
So if it, if it does well, then we're going to go a little wider. Well, when, when I saw it, and we, as I said, we, we had Bill Fickner up, and we were talking uh, a couple of weeks ago, we were talking to him about the movie. And when I was starting to first tell our listeners about it, I, I, I likened it to like when I see a, an emo band. And I'm the first guy, I'm not the first guy to see him, but I'm the first of my friends to see him. And I, there's something cool about that, about being able to tell all your friends, I turned you on to this. Yeah, you're going right. to be, uh, you're going to be glad that, uh, that you, you checked it out. Now seeing the film and, and the journey that you go on with it. And I was talking earlier about the, the, the clever writing and the attention to detail I, that kind of hit home with me because the, the final scene of the movie, again, not to give anything away, but uh, Patrick Fugit, who is the kid from Almost Famous, he, he lives in the town. He's your videographer. He runs the video store. This is his big chance at stardom. And uh, in the video store at the end, there's a wall, and he has all of the uh, tapes uh, that, that he shot, all the raw footage, and all the spines are labeled. And I found myself so interested in the intricacy of the film that I was trying to read the spines Good on all those you, yeah. labels at the end of the film. My question is this. Are there films that you've done that have little subtleties, little oh. Easter eggs? Oh, all over the place. Somebody's, you know what oh, I'm saying, man. somebody's name written on one of the it's spines so of those cassettes. It's so hard for me to uh, watch a movie with any kind of true clarity because mm -hmm. I, I see it as a, kind of like a home movie. You know, mm -hmm. I, I'm remembering the scenes that they didn't put in there, you know, the night, you know, oh, after work that night we went off. And we, you know, jammed up in my hotel or something. And, um, and my mind will be thinking about that. And by the time I get back to the movie, the movie's already, you know, yeah. been gone five minutes and I haven't been paying attention kind of thing. But it, the movies are loaded with, uh, I remember there was one movie and I can't even remember. I think, was it? Yeah, it was a movie called, uh, uh, it'll, it'll service, but the, the, the uh, director of photography hated uh, this orange pelican. That we would sneak into each shot. Oh yeah, and, you know he hated it, and then we would then he would throw it on the floor, and we would get the guys to paste it all together. You yeah, know? and it would it would always show up, and if you look closely in the movie, you'd, you can you'd see, it. see it. Yeah, Jeff Bridges.